Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai, the house of David. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shai, Barshem Rekar Kwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, especially in the times we're in, which indeed is a blessing. So, yeah, it's another video. Hopefully it's edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shai. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call this video we build our house upon rock upon stone they build their house upon sand we build our house upon rock and stone is going to be in parentheses they build their house upon sand of course i'm when i say they build their house upon sand i'm talking about these other israelite groups with their wacky doctrines their house is built upon sand it's not built upon stone which that stone is in reality is really Yahweh Shai Yahweh Shai is that stone and it's no coincidence that the name of our group is called Great Millstone the Bible um, calls Yahweh Shai a stone it says a scripture where it says uh Matter of fact, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is right here. This is a dark saying, a parable, if you will. Uh, Luke 20 and 17, and he beheld them and said, what is this then that is written the stone which the builders rejected those were the other wicked chief priests pharisees and scribes and lawyers also they were the the builders of their day right back during yahweh Shai's time they rejected yahweh Shai as being the being the savior of the nation of Israel that the Bible foretold was to come, you know, by you know the the ancient prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all foretold of uh, the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai, the Savior. Hell, even the old man in the book of Luke it speaks about the the old man that um, held Yahweh Shai in his in his arms as a baby. He was at the temple and um, Joseph and Mary came to dedicate Yahweh Shai as a baby, came to the temple and the old man was there and he was brought there by the Holy Spirit and the old man held the baby, baby Yahweh Shai in his arms and lifted up the baby and gave the baby a blessing. All right, he knew, the old man knew that that uh, Yahweh Shai, even as a baby, would be the salvation of the nation of Israel. That's what he said in the blessing. So here it is, even long before Yahweh Shai did his, did his ministry, an old man knew that Yahweh Shai was the salvation of Israel. And here it is, these uh, wicked chief priests, scribes, Pharisees, and, and Sadducees, and lawyers, they didn't know the holy spirit didn't reveal to them even while yahweh Shai was doing his ministry so how powerful is that show you it's all about that holy spirit that's why i always say the holy spirit is the engine of this ministry of ours and you you're really immensely blessed if the holy spirit is working with you man that's a precious gift right there the holy spirit and i just gave you an example so they rejected him, right? Which the builders rejected the stone, right? Which is Yahweh Shai. This is a dark saying. The same has become the head of the corner. So Yahweh Shai is the head. Just like the Apostle Paul said, that the head of every man is who? Yahweh Shai. When he gave the divine order, that's uh, 1 Corinthians 
the 11th chapter beginning at the first verse, right? Now here's the point. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. <laughs> so that stone is Yahweh Shai. And that's why I always say uh, uh, Yahweh Shai is the first great millstone. He's great and he's a millstone. Now what does a millstone do? It, grind, it, it grinds things to powder. That's the job of a millstone. Megas Mulos. If you watch Elder Pastor's videos at the very beginning, before he says anything, he, he puts a picture of a millstone. Okay? That's the job of a millstone. It grinds things down to powder. Okay? Megas Mulos. That's in the Greek. Great millstone. So it says, Whosoever shall fall upon that stone, and you know, shall be broken. And stones are very important. When you build a house, you, you build a house upon stone. You don't build it upon sand, as we're going to find out from the words of Yahweh Shai. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. <laughs> but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And that's literal too, because when Yahweh Shai comes back, He's going to grind these wicked Israelites to powder, man. He's going to, they're going to turn into dust before him. Let's get a, there's a scripture in the Apocrypha. Let me see if I can find it. Who shall not be beaten to powder? So when Yahushua comes back with those so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of Israel with the multitude of angels, man, they're going to be in them so-called UFOs, them chariots, and they're going to be flying, you know, doing maneuvers, and people are going to be losing their mind. Two-thirds of Israel, the majority of Israelites out here, they're going to be losing their mind, man, and them chariots are going to be right on them. Giving them the big wapo zappo, a hot bolt of lightning, a hot bolt of laser beam, and turning them into dust, turning them into powder. And if the chariots don't get them, the, the missiles will, the fire coming from the missiles. So in other words, no escape. We read about that in the book of Amos. It'll be as if a man leaned, it, leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. You know, this man trying to find some escape, but there's no escape. You know, a man ran away from a lion and a bear met him. You know the prophecy. In other words, no escape. And we're fast approaching that day, brothers. The only escape... Okay, it's 2nd Ezra 16 and 11. The only escape that you'll have in that day is being delivered... By the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, by Yahweh Shai. That's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do, deliver his elect. But everybody else, no escape. No escape in this. What was that, the beat nuts? No escape in this. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. <laughs> that's a bad, that's a bad cut, man. That's back when rap was rap. No escaping this. Anyway, um, you should go check that out. No escaping this. Second Esdras. Second Esdras 16. Let me start at 10. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, let me start at the 7th verse, Second Ezra 16 and 7. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Again, that's a dark saying for those missiles. All right. And also the laser beams coming out those chariots. And you know the, the prophet Habakkuk, he saw it, man. It's recorded in Habakkuk, the third chapter. He saw the laser beams coming out the chariots zapping people man they get the big wapple zappo you know and they're gonna be running down the street and 
in, in total horror and fear, panic, and get hit with a, 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 a laser beam of light and get get torn in half, get beaten to powder. That's literally going to happen, man. A good illustration of that is the movie uh, War of the Worlds. The scene where Tom Cruise is running away from the chariots. <laughs> he's, he's, he's escaping the chariots. <laughs> but it's not going to be little green men from Mars. It's going to be Yahweh and the angels. Okay? That day is coming. That day is fast approaching. That's the day when America is going to be turned into a lake of fire. So many missiles and chariots are going to hit this place. It's going to boil this place, man. There's a prophecy where the Lord said he have a sacrifice in Bozrah. And the people are going to be meat for the fuel. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture. <sighs> wow. Anyway, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. So now you know what that means. All right. That's those nuclear missiles coming out the silos. Once they're shot, you can't turn them back. It tells you that in the book of Joel, the second chapter. The missiles, uh, uh, once they're shot, they're going to hit their targets and do maximum damage. Okay? This is the work of our Lord Yahweh, who is also known as uh, the terrible demon-like power. You people out there, God is all love. God is all love. Have you, have you, have you found the love of God today? You people are retarded, man. You don't, you don't know the Heavenly Father, nor His only begotten Son, but you're getting ready to. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and indeed those, those missiles are a plague, and the chariot too. The chariot is a plague, the so-called UFO is a plague to the wicked. All right, it's, it's deliverance to us, the righteous. The chariot is deliverance to the righteous, but a plague to the wicked. In the book of Zechariah, the fifth chapter, when Zechariah saw the so-called UFO, and the heavenly father asked him, what do you see? He said, I see, a, I see a chariot. Basically, that's what Zechariah said. What did the Lord say to Zechariah? This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. So there's a day... When, when Yahweh Shai comes back, where the skies of the whole earth is going to be covered by those so-called UFOs, man, doing maximum damage to the people and to, and especially America, to this place called America. That's what the Lord told Zechariah. This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. What's the house of the thief? That's a dark saying for this place called America, which is also known as Babylon the Great, because how did the so-called white man get America? He stole it. Simply put, he stole it. Okay, he didn't get it righteously. So this is the house of the thief. All right, that's Zechariah, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. So it says, The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? So that's talking about when Yahweh Shai comes with those chariots and they're going to be setting people on fire. That's going to be the reward for their wickedness. He shall cast lightlings, and who shall not fear? Oh, there's going to be, talk about fear, man. Fear is going to be at the ultimate level. Panic, people running. Did not Yahweh Shai said that there shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth? Yes, he did. So there you go. Who shall not fear? He shall thunder and who shall not be af afraid? <laughs> I know a good thunder makes people afraid, man. That's a fact. Now, here's the point. The Lord, I mean, all these verses are the point, but this is the, 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 the point of the point. <laughs> the Lord shall threaten. And who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? So what does that mean? Meaning he's going to be in them chariots. People are going to be running away from the destruction. Right? And them laser beams are going to be hitting people. Turning them into powder. They're going to be instantly vaporized. Turned into salt. Kind of like that uh, uh, Lot's wife. That was turned into a... a, a 
a mountain of salt and that mountain is there to this very day okay as as a matter of fact that mountain is that little mountain is known as lot's wife to this very day I'm show you the power of these scriptures all right so that's the point the lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence so that lines up with luke 20 proving that yahweh shai is the stone whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken but on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder okay so going back to our topic <laughs> yahweh shai is that stone that we have built our house upon and Another thing that Yahweh Shai did was he took Peter aside from the rest of the uh, disciples, the apostles, and said he would build his house, Yahweh Shai that is, said he would build his house upon Peter. All right. Uh, Peter in the Greek is known as Petra, which means rock. Peter was also called Cephas which means stone. All right, let's get that. Let's prove that. The book of John 1 and 42. And he brought him to Yahawishai. And when Yahawishai beheld him, that would be uh, uh, Peter, Simon Peter, right? And when who became the head of the disciples, the apostles, and when Yahweh Shai beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So Yahweh Shai himself being a stone, when he began to build a house, right, he built it upon stone. And that was Peter. Now, the reason why he chose Peter is, as I've done the video before, Peter in his past life was David, King David. So, Yahweh Shai was fulfilling the prophecy written in Amos 9, chapter the 11th verse. Let's get that. So, the only house being built right now that the Lord recognizes is the house of David. And that's to his liking. Okay? So that's kind of heavy that we have this name Great Millstone because the house of David, the house of David was built upon stone. When Yahweh Shai started to build it, Yahweh Shai himself being a stone, when he started to build it, he built it upon stone. He chose Peter to build a house. Peter in the Greek is Petra, which means rock, but he also gave him the name Cephas, which means stone. So check that out, man. So another title for the house of David would be a great millstone because the house of David was built upon stone. This is Amos 9, 9 and 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, or the house of David. And we're in that day now. All right. And then... When uh, Rabbi Abba Bivens came on the scene, he was sent to build the house of David. And then he actually ended up ch choosing David. One of the men that he chose uh, was King Masha. All right. King Masha, we believe, in his past life was David. That's why King Masha ultimately became the, uh, the head of 1 West 125th Street. All right, that was full, uh, the beginning of the fulfillment of Amos 9 and 11, where the Lord said this, I'm reading it here. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. That's the differences between the tribes. Because the Lord is calling all the tribes, all 12 tribes, not just the Jews. All right, he's calling all 12 tribes. That includes the tribe of Ephraim, you know, 12,000 out of that tribe. You, you know the scripture. The 144,000 and the one-third. Okay? So there you go. So the 144,000 is part of the, the council of David. The 
David's uh, cabinet, if you will, when he was when he was in rulership. All right, they're part of that uh, that that house, the the hundred forty four thousand. They're the they they're the future. They're the future government body of the nation of Israel, the future leaders, if you will, beginning with Yahweh as the head. Okay, and that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof. That those are differences between the tribes, such as Ju Judah and Ephraim. Back in the past, there was this vexation between the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Ephraim. You know, Judah would vex Ephraim, and Ephraim would envy Judah because Judah being the head. Well, all of that is abolished. All right, when you come into this knowledge, into this truth, you know those differences are, are put aside they're abolished and we become like one family one unit okay uh in that day will i raise up the tabernacle of david that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and i will raise up his ruins and i will build it as in the days of old so that prophecy is happening even as i speak the tabernacle of david and the tabernacle is almost done it's almost completed and once it's completed you know the lord have called all the individuals of the tabernacle of david then the door is shut that's when all hell is going to break loose and that takes us back to matthew 7 and 24 so all the israelites that built their house upon sand and not upon rock or not upon stone they're going to feel it man when all hell breaks loose the time of Jacob's trouble, the terror storm that is coming, oh, they're going to feel it, and their house is going to fall apart. Let's read it. Uh, Matthew 7 and 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, heareth them and understand them. It's one thing to hear something, but it's a whole nother, uh, it's a whole nother ballpark to understand it. Understand what you're hearing. A lot of Israelites, they hear, but they don't understand. And you know they don't understand by what they're doing. They, 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 you know, they're bringing in things into the ministry that have no place in the ministry. Their doctrine is off. It's, it, 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 you know, the doctrine is off. Okay, they're teaching things which, as the scripture has said, they're teaching things which they are not. You know, the head is this ministry is simple. You know, they're complicating it. You know, the, the scriptures speak about superfluity of naughtiness. They're involved in that. You know, they built they have built their house upon sand, and I'm not going to name names. I mean, you should know when I say certain Israelites have built their house upon sand. You should know who I'm talking about. You know, the doctrine is not sound as a rock. They have no sure foundation. You don't know if these guys want to be entertainers or if they want to be teachers. You don't know if they want to be prophets or profiteers. They're building their house upon sand, man. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. There's also a parable where, a parable where it speaks about the, the foolish virgins and the wise virgins. The wise virgins are wise men that built their house upon rock. The foolish virgins are those foolish men that built their house upon sand. Okay? And the rains, or the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. So what is that? That's a metaphor for the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, you know what? Um, uh, let me get that scripture in Revelation, because there's a time of trouble that the Lord is going to bring upon this planet Earth, a time of temptation, and the main temptation is going to be that MOTB. You know what that MOTB is? That C hip, right? That's the C hip where Esau, the top banking families of Esau, is going to make this thing mandatory. That's all part of Esau's so called New World Order. And they're going to they're gonna send out their goon squad, all right, their, their military police, you know, the different military police groups that Esau has. They're going to send their goon squad out to make sure people take that MOTB because that is the uh, the agenda of the wicked elite all right you go back to the conversation between Aaron Russo 
and Nick Rockefeller and Nick Rockefeller, the Rockefellers being one of the top banking families, they said, we want everyone C-hipped. That's exactly what Nick Rockefeller told Aaron Russo. We want everyone C-hipped. Okay, if you C, the C to the H to the I to the P, okay? To the P, to the E, to the D. They want everyone C-hipped. And that indeed is the MOTB, the mark of the beast. And that is the the crowning glory of the so-called New World Order, which is on the back of your dollar bill, the pyramid with the all seeing eye, with the Latin words, Novos Ordo Seclorium, which means New World Order. Okay, that is what they want. So they're going to send out their armies to police all the people, corral them, if you will, into taking it. And that's when all hell is going to break loose. Okay, it is, it is not going to be a pleasant time, I'll tell you that. So that is the great temptation that the Lord is going to bring. That is the time of Jacob's trouble. That is those winds and the rains descending. All right, let me get uh, let me get that scripture. Here it is, right here, the book of, and we we talk about it all the time. We teach it, and we we when I say we, Great Millstone, our affiliates that teach like us, but they necessarily don't have our name on their title. We bring this out all the time. We bring out this information about the sea hip, about the the terror storm that's coming. You know, Alex Jones years ago made a video called Terror Storm. In, in that video, he focuses on the military groups, the martial law military groups of Esau that's going to be rolled out. You know, over the years, they've done plenty of exercises that show they're going to send out the military in that time. You know, you had that exercise in Boston a few years ago where they had the military out there. You know, uh, there's been tons of examples where Esau is going to send out his military during the time of martial law. Okay, so this is the time of uh, temptation, the hour of temptation. This is it, Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, and that's, that's referring to those that are of the house of David, those that are uh, part of the congregation, that their house was built upon rock, upon stone, not upon sand. Okay, they have kept the word of the Lord's patience, right? Which is this knowledge, this truth. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So what is the hour of temptation? Them other groups don't even go into that. They don't even go into the hour of temptation. What is that? That's when Esau makes this MOTB mandatory. Okay, years ago, before Joe Biden became president, Joe Biden, I forgot the guy, uh, he's Justice of Peace he was, he was speaking to. You, you've seen the video. I forgot the guy's name. He said, uh, the time is coming when you will rule on a, a, a microscopic device, I-M-P-L-A-N-T-E-D, okay? A microscopic device, I M P L A. N T E D. We gotta speak like that in code so the video don't get taken down. So the algorithm algorithm don't get set off. You know, we gotta do what we gotta do to get the message out there. So Biden told this guy, the Chief Justice, uh, Chief Justice of uh, the Chief Justice. I forgot the rest of the title. Forgive me. You can research it. He, he told him the time is coming when you're gonna rule on that where everyone must take this, this sea hip. So that is the time of temptation. That is the hour of temptation. Okay? And it's not going to be a nice time. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So we're going to need deliverance in that day. And the ones that are going to be delivered are the ones that kept the word of the Lord's patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, because this is going to be a, a new world order, okay? Not just America, they want the whole world policed, right? Which shall come upon all the world to try them, test them. So this is a test. 
to try them that dwell upon the earth. And this is why we tell you the, the MOTB, that's the most high, the most highest MOTB. And the reason why the, he the Heavenly Father have that out there is to test his people. See how many people are going to fold like a lawn chair, a cheap lawn chair, and, and run to Esau to take this MOTB. And how many of his people are going to stand firm even unto the end, as it is written, a fight, a good fight of faith, even unto death. So it's a thing of faith. It's a test of faith. Now, if your house is built upon sand, you ain't got no faith. You're gonna, your house is going to fold like a cheap lawn chair. And that's all. That's pretty much the majority of these other Israelite groups, man. I'm telling you here now, their house is built upon sand. And they're not going to survive this hour of temptation. They're not going to survive these rains and floods that are coming. The terror storm. Okay, let's read it again. Matthew 7 and 25. And the rain descended and the floods came. So the time of trouble is coming, man. We have to brace ourselves. We're not out the woods yet. You know, like Yahweh Shai said, he said it best. He said, if they do these things in a green tree, what shall they do in a dry? You got people losing their mind and things ain't really even pop off yet. It's starting to, but it hasn't really pop, pop off like it's going to pop off. You know, people are already losing their mind. So, you know, that's because their house is was built upon sand. If you believe in the American dream and you think that's going to be your salvation, your house is built upon sand. You know, and to you other Israelite groups that you don't know if you want to be a part of the world or if you, or if you want to serve Yahweh Shem Yashai in sincerity and truth, your house is built upon sand. As is written, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A lot of you guys, you other Israelite group, you're double-minded. You don't know if you want to be entertainers or, or serious men of Yahweh Shem Yashai. You, you got one foot in the world and one foot in the truth. <laughs> Again, I don't have to call names. You know who you are, okay? You know by your actions. Yahweh Shai said it best. A tree is known by its fruits, okay? And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. So get ready. That storm is coming, man. And it's going to be one hell of a storm. And the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. And we got a perfect example of that when Yahweh Shai chose Peter and gave him the name Cephas, which means stone. That is the house of David because Peter in his past life was David. So it's kind of heavy that we should be blessed with such a name and we didn't choose that name for ourselves. That name kind of evolved, the name Great Millstone. Now, am I saying everyone that's part of Great Millstone is of that, that house? No. The house is constantly being purged. That's why we're going through all this, the fires of, the, of this tribulation. That's designed to purge out the weak. All right, let's get it. He will thoroughly purge his floor. And then there's uh, another scripture where it says the fan is in Yahweh Shai's hand. So we should rejoice when we're being persecuted, when we're going through tribulation, and we still have the presence, presence of mind to serve Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai in sincerity and truth. That's a blessing, man, because Yahweh Shai, as it is written, he, well, it is right here. It is right here. Uh, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. This should have been written in red. Matthew 3. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I have to correct myself. These are the words, I always say that. These are the words of John the Baptist, who was a predecessor to Yahweh Shai. I have to correct myself. That's why it's not written in red. Matthew 3. Well, John the Baptist's words is just as good as Yahweh Shai's words anyway. <laughs> it's Yahweh Shai speaking through John the Baptist, through the Spirit. Matthew 3 and 10. This is what John the Baptist said about Yahweh Shai. And now also the axe. Who's the axe? <laughs> Yahweh Shai is the axe. So if a guy falls out the truth, guess what? He got axed. He got axed by the axe, which is Yahweh Shai. Another title for Yahweh Shai, the axe. Hey, if they tell you, man, yo, tomorrow we're going we're gonna to take you to the axe. You're going to be wondering what this guy looked like, what kind of attitude he's going to have, what kind of spirit. Come on, man. <laughs> that's a menacing name, the axe. Well, that's Yahweh Shai, man, the axe. 
And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Who are the trees? We are. So the axe is always ready to cut down, man. <laughs> All right? Yeah, like that song by, uh, by uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers, Small Axe. You should check that song out. You know, we are sharpened to cut you down. <laughs> sharpened to cut you down. Well sharp. You should go check. You should go check that song out, man. Small X. I think it came out in '73 by a Bob Marley and the Whalers. Well, that's Yahweh Shai. He's the axe, sharpened to cut you down. Well, sharp. Anyway, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Where are the trees? Therefore, every tree which bringeth forth or which bringeth not good fruit. And you got some Israelites out there that are not bringing good fruit. The fruit they're bringing is rot. Okay, they, the, the, the sacrifice they're bringing is, is rancid, is putrid. Okay, and you think the Most High going to accept that sacrifice? You must be out of your mind. You should read about Cain, the sacrifice that Cain brought. The Lord didn't accept that shit. All right, and let Cain to lose his mind. He went and murdered his, his brother Abel. Because Abel's sacrifice was better. I guess you guys haven't learned the lesson of uh, the, the sacrifice of Cain. You know, you bring in the, you, you're in Israel and you're bringing this, this rancid sacrifice and you're expected to be accepted. You know who you are. I ain't going to call names. Anyway, let's move on. It says, Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. Yeah, hewn down by the axe, beaten to powder. We read it earlier. <sighs> and cast into the fire. There you go, beaten to powder. All right. Uh, let's read on. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That's John the Baptist speaking, right? And that John the Baptist is all, well, that's why it was called John the Baptist. His thing was baptizing with water, which the water is a metaphor for the word. It tells us that in Ephesians uh, 5 and 26. That's why we don't baptize with water anymore. The water is the word. Okay? The water is the word. Uh, how does a man be cleansed? By the word. Psalm 119 and I believe it's 9. Psalm 119 and 9. You can go read that. John... Another scripture is John 15 and 3. Now you are cleansed through the word I have spoken unto you. So it ain't the water, it's the word. Okay? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Exactly. And that would be who? Yahweh Shai. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the Holy Spirit is the engine that gives us the understanding. Those are the angels that are sent to us from the Heavenly Father to give us understanding in the ministry. And with fire. What is the fire? The tribulation that you're going to catch. The hell that you're going to catch being in this knowledge, being in this truth. It's a rite of passage being in this ministry. The hell that we catch, the, 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 the thoughts that plague us, you know, the, the, our ailments in the body. You name it, man. These are tests. These are tests from Yahweh Bashim Yahshai to see what kind of character we have. Are we going to endure it or are we going to run? Now I say endure it. And I say, like Job said, though he slay me, yet will I maintain my trust in him. You could be to the point of where you think you're, you're going out of your fucking mind. You're, you're, you're going insane. I say still serve Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Still cling on to him. And we're going to win in the end, man. That's the spirit we got to have. That warrior spirit. That do or die spirit. All right? That warrior spirit, man. Okay? So we being... Remember, and it's not like the Lord never told us that we're going to endure these things. You go in the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, it says, my, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully... And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. I know that scripture by heart because it's dear to me. 
these are powerful words and it tells us what we're going to endure coming into this knowledge into this truth so it's not like we were never warned all right so again and those that can't take the fire those that can't take the tribulation eventually they burn out they fall off all right it says he shall baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire so john the baptist never lied now check this out the 12th verse whose fan is in his hand so he, the yahusha can turn up the heat he can turn up the heat but the scripture also said that the lord is not going to put more on us than we can endure okay so depending on the level of faith some brothers go through heavy heavy tribulations and they're able to deal with it because they've been given a great portion of faith and some brothers go through light tribulations they're able to deal with it because of their portion of faith okay remember the heavenly father is a power of balance let's not forget that although it may seem like we're going through more hell than you know <laughs> the scriptures call it a, a, a light affliction that we're going through all right the scriptures call it a light affliction <laughs> Scripture also says we have not resisted until until blood. You know, so why do you think the Bible is called the comforter, huh? Anyway, Matthew 3 and 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he will now here's the point why I brought the scripture out, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. So how are we being purged? Through these tribulations, through these tests, all right, which builds our character. Some guys, they go through the test and they lose it, man. They fall apart. They get all emotional. They start cursing out the doctrine. They start cursing out their, their teachers. You know, men they once looked up to. Now, now, now those men have become the biggest assholes, you know. <laughs> their teachers, that is. We understand that, okay? We understand that. They, they, they became offended and they fell out. The scriptures say that, you know. Like a jilted lover, you know, like a, a woman that, that fall out with her, her husband and they, they become the, the, the bitterest, of, if that's a word, the bitterest of enemies. I hope it is. <laughs> the, you know, they become bitter enemies. Yeah. So, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. So, we're going to be thoroughly purged, which means... We're going to be tested like we've never test, been tested before. And that real test is going to come when they make this MOTB mandatory. Watch how many guys are going to fold that once called themselves Israelites that were wearing them super duper pooper scooper garments. You know, uh, kung, like Apostle Tal calls them kung fu fringes and shit. Watch them guys fold like a cheap lawn chair, man. All right. <laughs> that's, that's the one that built his house upon sand. And, it, and his house fell apart, okay? The bottom line is Yahweh Shai is going to thoroughly purge his floor. That is the bottom line. So we, we should expect tribulation, okay? Uh, Acts 14 and 22, what, is, what does that say? It says, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, let me get it. This, is, this thing of ours is never meant to be easy. It's meant to be hard and gritty, man. And that's how we got to become. Hey, as, as hard as this thing of ours makes its face we we got to make our face harder this is war man yeah think like a warrior acts 14 and 22 confirming the souls of the disciples confirming them and exhorting them to continue in the faith this is this this message is directed to us us that believe this knowledge is true confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, continue in the faith, and that we must, must, M-U-S-T, through much tribulation. Did you catch that? Through much tribulation, however form it comes. All right? <laughs> this is war, man. <laughs> we, through much, we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. So this a thing of ours was never meant to be easy. Look at how we shy. Look at how hard it, it was for him. Look at what he had to endure. And he's the only begotten son of the Most High. How much more us, man? 
scripture have said, arm ourselves likewise with the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. So, so, you know, it's a good thing to suffer, man, because it purges us, man. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. There you go. And gather his wheat into the garner. Huh? But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Those are the guys that built their house upon sand, man. They're the chaff. They're going to fall apart. When all that hell comes, lo comes loose, they're going to fall apart, man. And you're going to bear witness to it. You're going to see it. Like Elder Pastor always say, you got guys that never prepared for the MOTB, the understanding of it, according to the scriptures, they're going to lose their damn minds, man. They're going to be running like a chicken with its head cut off. And I've literally saw that. When I spent some time in St. Lucia, I saw them cut the head off a chicken, cut it clean off. And the chicken was jumping up and down like it still had life in it. This is the, this the, the craziest thing to see, man. Anyway, Matthew 7 and 26. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. You got plenty of examples of that right now. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. So the storm is coming and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it you got these you got some great israelite houses right now but that they've been built upon sand they got many members <laughs> they got the pomp and the pride and all of that man but watch watch when the storm comes watch that house watch how how quick it falls apart okay and the members of that house they're going to turn against their leaders they go hunt them, man, high and low, for lying to them, for, 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 for blowing smoke up their ass. You didn't get that head, Great Millstone. We gave you the straight skinny through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. The leadership, beginning with the leadership, Elder Pastor and down, we gave you the straight, the straight skinny. We told you the bitter as well as the sweet. So now you can't say that you were never told. You can't say you were never warned. Okay? Because we gave you the bitter and we gave you the sweet. As we're supposed to. Alright. So pretty much that's the message. Hopefully you learned something from it. Hopefully you were edified. If you was, as, as always, drop a line in the comment section. Alright. And it's on to the next one.